We're gonna catch this fish today, whether we like it or not. We got a dive today. I still have an ear infection. Yeah. Serious? Yeah. We gotta catch the fish, man. Fish on three. One, two, three. When we tell you to lift, you just lift, right? <laughs> huge. Like a big splash. Cheers. Cheers. We have to get this. I need a bigger box. And I give dimensions. Uh, let's see. Marathon uh, box crab trap. So we, it's a crab trap. That's what it is. So I feel like, all right, let's go. We got to head out. We're going to catch this fish today, whether we like it or not. And then when I'm there, I could also get plan B's, get huge fish netting lines. I go there and we're done. And if that plan A doesn't work, we try plan B. Okay. Actually, my plan A is a fish net. If that doesn't work, I keep that crab trap in there for the next two or three days. Yep. Okay. So let's go. So as you recall from last episode, we had a few fish with some flukes on their eyes. We're gonna go after them again. The conspic hybrid and the heniochus butterflies with a different trap. Hey, Dunn, we got a, we got a dive today. I still have an ear infection no last time. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. Okay. So we got two things. We got to get the cage. We got to get a bigger cage because I think the one we have is too small. Can you please give me the measurement of the size that we have now? We're going to go to Dick's to get a larger cage. Okay. Um, that's plan B. Plan A is what I wanted to do with you. I'm still going to try to do it alone and see if it works. Okay. Where we get a huge net, put it on one side of the rock, try to like spook the fish to come out on the other side. And it'll go in a net and I'll trap it. And then I also need a large bag to put the fish in. Large bag? Yeah. Let's see what I can find. Yeah. Or even one of those large crates. Clear cr crates. One of those guys? Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying not to like, you know, I don't want to damage it with the net and move it around the tank. Okay. We got to protect the tide at the end of the day, right? We don't want to put more damage to it. Yeah. We got to catch the fish, man. Fish on three. <laughs> one, two, three. Bah! Can you guys say fish, man? Fish? Did you never play football? <laughs> no. <laughs> So we had to change our strategy up a little bit and I thought we needed to buy some bigger nets because we really want to catch these fish. So far, I like this better. This at least is bigger. I would take two of them. Probably need a smaller handle and not Why? too big. I mean, yeah, but the problem is I think this comes... I mean, I could do one of these and we're like, one of them, well, boop! We could put food in this thing, but... I like this trap. You know why? What we could do with this is I put seaweed here and we lift it as soon as they go in there. Yeah. When we tell you to lift, you just lift. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, it'll be perfect. So I gave Andrew a call just to walk him through plan A, B, and C. We weren't sure if we we're going to catch these fish, but the first plan was to take a huge net in there, put some seaweed in there because the, the, the tangs and, and angels and all the fish just can't resist it. And then the other plan was just get some bigger nets and make sure that we can catch this fish. So I think Dunn is in charge of this. Then we could have another string yep. outside of this. I don't want them both be connected. Dunn has two strings. He has this as a string. Where is Dunn going to physically be? He's going to be up top, laying on, up top. On the board. He's going to pull the yellow center on the board. So the string, I'm going to get rid of this because I don't want him spooked out. Yep. Plus, we don't need this. What? What? What is that for? It's for, for, for the crabs, for a flow, whatever. Okay, whatever. Then the other one's gonna be another string with the actual PVC that we have. We don't have to do anything to it. And he's gonna float that like literally right here. Okay. The, the other PVC. Okay. That what are we gonna do? Cut it off the rope? Cut it off the rope and just add some of this rope to it so he's holding it and doing one of these. Okay. This the water level is like right here. So as soon gonna, as so you see him meet. Yeah. Done. Okay. Fast pull. Yeah. Then we pull this all the way out. Out of the water. Slowly bring it in there. You could keep this up. And then that's where you go or I go and we put it in a five gallon bucket. Take out the fish that we want. Drop this in the, the tank. I go for yeah. it. Let's see what happens. You see, yeah. uh, so, you, so you have to get kind a of feed with that PVC bar sort of near the surface. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we'll tell you. Walkie talkie, I'm going to use it. You gotta use it from the gym. Cause all the action's from the gym. Plus I wanna try this walkie talkie where the antenna's really in the water. 
So we need that slack. If we need to get a longer wire, I'll talk to him about it. But I really want to try this out. Two, three, testing, testing. One, two, three. You good? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Rashid, do you want Don to meet you up there now? Okay, let's do it. So Don was hanging on the top and holding that large net where he, we're going to try the seaweed in there along with some frozen food. And then I was also in there with the two large nets just to see if I can catch a fish that just wasn't looking with the bad eye. She went about squirting some uh, frozen food from the bottle at, at, by those nets. They, they may go right in there. Yeah, it's coming. We're going to do our best to catch this fish because if we don't, we may have to treat the tank with a drug we don't want to. So two hours into this, I finally caught one of the heniocas in the net. I'm sure it's happened to all of us, whether it's in a 17,000 gallon tank or a 20 gallon tank. I caught it. Of course, I almost slipped because the power heads and the flow is so intense in there and a slight little opening, he got right out. So I went to go get Rashid some food to trap the fish. And all of a sudden I heard screaming and yelling and apparently he caught the heniocus. Good, 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 good. It's huge, it's huge. So I'm walking to the quarantine tank to put the heniocus in and I hear more screaming. Apparently he got another one. Those Heniocus butterflies are huge. As I was putting one in, I got splashed in the face and then the two were fighting with each other and I had to move one alone. Tear down to zero. Okay. Some fresh prosy. So we got three out of the four fish we wanted, two heniocuses and a gold flake with a skin condition. Uh, the treatment will be rather simple. Praziquantel for the uh, flukes, a formalin bath, and or a freshwater dip, depending on what comes off the eye. We're gonna do two water changes. The first one on the quarantine system. We're doing a copper water change, which is basically changing about 60 to 70% of this water with fresh salt water already made up. But the important part of this is there is medication in this tank treating the fish for uh, prophylactically to prevent parasites. And the key is you can never, it's a poison, copper is a poison. And you never can go below a certain threshold, otherwise the parasite can attack the fish and you can't go above because they'll kill the fish. So we need to transfer the water from the bucket into, yeah, into this the system, but the copper must be in here before it goes in here. We keep a copper level, it's a chelated copper. We use copper power. We keep it between two and 2.5. And as long as you do that, you can do as many and bigger water changes as you want. So Yeltsin's making salt water now in the large vat. We make that very simply by buying really three components. One is the sodium chloride, where we use four bags of 50 pounds of size and weight for each 1,000 gallons of water, one 50 pound bag of magnesium sulfate, and three buckets of ESV liquids that get delivered to me. The important thing when making salt water is to make sure the temperature of the new water going in the tanks is equal to the temperature of the current systems. So you will see manual testing of salinity and temperature, even though we have probes on the computer telling us what those temperatures are. So now you see, we like to keep it simple, and that's the way we do the big water changes in this big tank. Guys, it's been, um, it's been quite a journey, shooting uh, Diary of a Mad Reefer. It's been a lot of fun. We got a chance to uh, hang out with some good friends. Now we're heading off to dinner. So the whole team uh, gets together and you know, we could just speak a little bit on how 
we thought the episodes went. And definitely looking forward to bringing you guys another season. So thank you for watching and, uh, you know, just stay tuned. I'm really pleased at the team and the progress we've made, particularly on this series. And my wife and I really felt that the team should be taken out for dinner and celebrate this occasion. The cheers to Polo Reef, its past, its future, and our relationships going forward. Cheers. Cheers. Pray to the reef god. Keep praying. Cheers. Dinner gave us a great opportunity to reflect on this whole season. And I can't wait to get these corals into their new displays next season. We have a lot of fun with the dinner, with my team. I can't wait for the next season, guys. See you next season. It was really nice for Andrew and Orly to take the team out. We got a chance to catch up. Uh, definitely reflected on the season a bit and even started talking about what to do next with the large 2,500 gallon tank and the 900 drop down coming to the next season. Uh, but wanted to make sure that we also caught up with our buddy JC. He's a good friend of mine that joined the team early on and he's the one who's in charge of all the merchandise and the website. So I wanted to make sure we brought him on and here he is here. Hey guys, JC with Polo Reef here. And you know, it's really funny how things pan out. Um, I joined Polo Reef recently and uh, the universe just kind of lines up things um, in its own crazy way. I've worked in the industry and I've been in the hobby, you know, since I was a little kid. I mean, I remember going in with my dad out. Like I, I joke around with Rashid all the time. We have our fish tanks and you know, it's, it's all great. It's a, it's a, uh, a, a labor of love for us. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, it's all about learning. It's all about nature, science, basic ecosystems, and just how our role in this planet can affect those things. But most importantly, how our role helping the planet can help things get better. And by bringing awareness to, to coral conservation or ocean conservation through reef aquariums, I think that is just absolutely the coolest thing. And we are very lucky to be able to be doing this. I get a lot of questions about my history in reefing and when I started this hobby. I remember as a small boy, being eight years old, riding on a bicycle on streets and boulevards that you would never allow your kid to do now, with a basket, going to the fish store, coming back with fish. I remember my grandfather taking me to the local fish stores and setting up tanks. You know, I did the same thing most of you did. 10 gallons became 20 gallons, 20 became 40. Live bearers became African cichlids, African cichlids became discus. Discus became salt water. I tried to teach my dad how to deal with the salt water while I was in college, but that's another story and that didn't go so well. My father knew that this was a hobby that burned money and time. And he was an investment guy, so that bothered him. But he allowed me and encouraged me and fostered this hobby within me. And even tried to keep a tank while I was in college. God bless him for teaching me the importance of going after your dreams. After coming back from college, I started up on this passion again. Now, after a series of 800 gallon tanks and 1,000 gallon systems, to 17,000 gallons in your house. The original vision for this tank was to create a spectacular wall of water unparalleled to anything anybody has ever done with a collection of fish from Hawaii, the Indo-Pacific to Australia, extremely rare and unduplicated. I wanted to raise the bar in the industry and I believe I surpassed my, my goals and original dreams. I used to think this tank was gonna stay coral light and we would focus on the fish, but frankly, has turned out so much better than my expectation.
the amount of beautiful corals and aquascaping and work that we did in here and collecting, which is really a function of the team. We have nurtured and developed all organically. I think they have one thing really in common, and that's passion in their heart. They take care of this beast like it's their own. And that's the way I hire. I hire with passion and fire in people's hearts. Combined with knowledge, wow. So what does this tank mean for me? It gives me the ability to give back in inspiration, in smiles. It also makes me realize how beautiful nature is, how small and insignificant we are in the world. It gives me peace and love when things aren't going my way in the market. And it sure makes you think and realize that stock prices don't really matter. So Polo Reef's main mission will be to give back. We wanna focus on education and teaching people about tanks and the science. We wanna fund schools and programs that promote marine sciences. And we'll be focusing on things as grand as reef restoration and coral spawning to the mundane giving tanks and supplies to schools and helping local reefing clubs sell frags from this beautiful reef. We wanna sell merchandise where all profits goes back into reef restoration and other charities so that you guys can participate also in this philanthropy. I was gonna say no ties allowed, but I thought that would be a little rude. Yeah. <laughs> Dressed up for, for, for the plane ride for us? Everything. How is the flight and everything? Good? It's good. It's good. We started this series, Diaries of a Mad Reef Keeper, for three reasons. One, we want to continue to educate and educate this hobby. Secondly, we thought we could do it in an entertaining manner uh, that only us reefers know. And lastly, we thought we could bring this to the mainstream, which we think is key to growing this hobby. We have received such good feedback from you, our audience, on the show, and had such a great time ourselves that we vow to be back next season, bigger and better than before. I'd like to dedicate this series to the two people in my life that influenced me in all ways, particularly in the reefing hobby. My grandfather, who took me to local fish store after local fish store, and kept upgrading me from 10 gallons to 20 gallons to 40 gallons. And my father, who just left us recently, thank you, guys.